Thank you very much for your time there. Now, following Obama's distancing himself from, uh, of, of course, the King Salam in the Atlantic magazine, what prompted this visit? Well, uh, the visit of President Obama to the kingdom, it's an extension of the Camp David visit. And this visit is basically to lay the ground on the U.S. Uh, GCC, if you will, Saudi Arabia relation. Um, President Obama, he's uh, at the end of his term. He's uh, trying to uh, nail his uh, Obama doctrine in the in the in the history, and he's trying to get his his uh, Obama creed, I would say, into the GCC country and Saudi Arabia to accept it, and that to uh, open uh, or ease uh, their uh, so, uh, relation with Iran. Uh, I think uh, this is a dear uh, thing to Obama to uh, massage through the presidents uh, or the kings and the emirs of the GCC countries. And um, uh, the GCC countries, including Saudi Arabia, they made it clear that there is no negotiation in the Iran issue unless Iran pull out its influence and its uh, instigating uh, policies in Iraq, Syria and Yemen and Lebanon. Uh, Obama is coming with one major thing also for the Iraqis. Obama is coming with a $400 billion plan that he would like to secure from the GCC within the coming two to four years in order to help Iraq to, uh, you know, be stabilized and uh, the government to function well and the economy to um, you progress. I think also this is will be subject uh, to the approval of the GCC uh, kings and emirs, and it has to be under the condition that actually Iran influences out of Iraq. So pretty much Obama is coming over here just to sum up his presidency, uh, to sum up his legacy in history by trying to do whatever he can do in order to secure whatever he's been working on. Well, as you say, I mean, this summit, it's a year after Camp David, and uh, that was met with many concerns uh, from the Gulf leaders, including King Salman. Uh, he didn't even attend the meeting. So this is a very ambitious agenda for this summit. How do you think uh, Obama's pressing concerns over more diplomacy with Iran will be received? Well, uh, definitely, we know that uh, diplomacy with Iran never worked before, and it will not work. So we're just going to hold tight to our seats until the new president comes to the to this uh, to uh, to the White House, and we're going to see what is the next step for the uh, the next U.S. government, and if they're going to uh, continue uh, with uh, establishing relation with a regime that they keep violating. Uh, you know, even the closest thing two weeks ago, they fired two ballistics missiles, which is against of what they've agreed on uh, on a couple months ago. So if they're going to continue that, I think the GCC, the the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, they are in a higher position right now. They don't need any alliances with anybody. They know what's good for them. They know what's good for the region. They have uh, a lot of allies. They have uh, uh, Saudi Arabia have the GCC. The GCC has Saudi Arabia. The GCC has uh, has uh, Egypt, has Turkey, has uh, has so many countries that they could, uh, you know, stand alone. Uh, a month ago, we had the uh, Islamic coalition that happened called North Thunder in the north of uh, Saudi Arabia. All these kind of messages just hints for everybody that Saudi Arabia and the GCC country means business. You know, we used to depend on the United States. Uh, the uh, President Obama in the past eight years left us with a huge vacuum in the region. Actually, uh, all what his uh, policies in the region was uh, uh, wrong decisions. We don't feel that uh, the Obama administration actually know what is the Middle East like, they don't know what the Middle East thinks like, and we are, uh, you know, we mean business at the end of the day. Today, the GCC countries, Saudi Arabia, they have a higher bargaining uh, hand over the United States. Okay, it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of this summit. Thank you very much for that, Ahmed. Ahmed Al-Ibrahim uh, from Riyadh there.